Hey, it's Angelina, and today I'm going to be telling you guys my 55 days of Christmas watch list. So pretty much what this is, is I decided that from November 1st to December 25th, I will be watching a Christmas movie every single day until Christmas. I'm doing this because I just feel like sometimes Christmas can end up being really focused on the day of Christmas and not as much on the celebration leading up to it and celebrating the season and I've had trouble with that these past few years of kind of being excited for Christmas rather than just like waiting around for it to just be the Christmas day. So I thought a fun way would be to watch a movie every single day for myself personally that's a Christmas movie or a Christmas adjacent movie. And since this is a physical media slash pop culture channel, I thought it would be fun to share with you guys my list. I also have some physicals. So if I have the physical of one of the movies that I'm watching, I will show you the DVD or the Blu-ray or whatever of it. And when I'm filming this, it's November 16th. So I have watched a good amount of them already. So for those ones, I will be telling you like my a review of them or whatever um but i'm not gonna go as in depth telling you what each of these movies are about especially because some of them i don't even really know like i just watched the trailer real quick and was like okay fine I'll, that will be on the list but i will have my letterbox linked below i always have it and i am there i have my 55 days of christmas list so if you want to check out any of these movies um, you can and I also have another list that's me ranking them as I watch them um, so if you're interested in that just go to my letterbox down below um, so yeah do I have anything else to say I'm not in my room today I'm filming in my mom's room that doesn't really matter but just so I mention it so let's just start with the first one I have my list so the first movie that I watched was Babes in Toyland. I watched the 1946 one. I watched it on Disney Plus and I watched it with my mom and my niece. Um, and I gave it like a fry of 10. It's not real. It's a movie that's like popular to watch during the holidays, but it's not even really a Christmas movie. Um, it's very old. It was really like nostalgic because it reminded me of watching old movies with my grandma when I was little. But it's not really one I would rewatch for Christmas, I don't think. Number two is While You Were Sleeping. This has Sandra Bullock in it and Peter Gallagher. And this is actually a movie that takes place like the days after Christmas. And I was going to watch it then, but I decided to watch it um, the, as one of the first movies. And I loved this movie so much. I'm like someone who's like not fully into like rom-coms and stuff but I love this and I love Sandra Bullock also so I really enjoyed that number three we have Genie um which is a movie starring Melissa McCarthy where she plays a genie it's like a peacock movie this one it was kind of take it or leave it for me it took place around Christmas time but I wouldn't I don't think the main focus really was it being Christmas and that's why I put it at the top like I tried to kind of ease my way into Christmas movies so like going from like movies that like aren't necessarily about it being Christmas but just take place around Christmas time and then slowly get into like the full-on Christmas movie. Next movie I watched was Trapped in Paradise which with Nicolas Cage, Dana Carvey, and John Lovitz. Um, I watched this with my mom did not like it I did not really enjoy it yeah it was either that or the ref and I really wanted to watch the ref um which is about like this guy who like takes a family hostage on Christmas but I could not find it anywhere and yeah so I just had to watch Doctor Paradise because that was one of those two I was like worried about if I was gonna be able to find them so I put them together and just whichever one I could find I was gonna watch and Trapped in Paradise ended up being the one that I found Number five is something from Tiffany's. Um, I actually watched this on election night, so I was kind of distracted. But from what I saw of it, I actually pretty much enjoyed it. I think it's another one that if I do this again next year, I probably would rewatch it because I feel like I wasn't fully paying attention. But I did enjoy it for the parts that I was paying attention to. Number six and seven 
was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now these are obviously movies that are not completely based around Christmas, but they are seen as like I feel like movies that people watch a lot during the holidays just for the atmosphere. And I would say I decided to watch the first two and because so my favorite Harry Potter movie is Prisoner of Azkaban, but I associate that so much with Autumn that I didn't really want to watch it for this. Um, so I watched the first two. Sorcerer's Stone, I would say, is a good, to me, is if you're, you want to watch a movie around Christmas, but you don't want, like, that throw up or whatever you'd call it of, like, Christmas still in your face, I would say the first one is a pretty good one. Chamber of Secrets, there was, like, one scene where they're in the dining hall with the Christmas tree and then one scene of snow, but other than that, like, it wasn't a- for some reason I thought that one was more Christmas than it actually was. Watching them back to back, Chamber of Secrets definitely is not one of my favorite Harry Potter movies, but at least it's not in my like top three. So I watched the first two of those on the 6th and 7th of November, and I think I might, if I decide to do like a winter um, watch list, like watch movies every day of winter or something, um, I might watch the rest of the Harry Potter movies again because I feel like they are good winter movies. Number eight, I have Godmothered, which was this movie with Isla Fisher on Disney+. Plus. I watched this again with my mom and my niece. It was fine. It was another one that's like, isn't necessarily about Christmas. It just takes place at Christmas time. Another one where I was like, take it or leave it. It was fine. It wasn't horrible, but next I we have Krampus. Um, I don't really like horror movies um, because I have OCD and it really messes with my intrusive thoughts that I get from OCD so I'm not somebody who can really watch horror movies that much or I have to be really careful with them and um, but I decided to watch Krampus because it's like PG-13 and also like the whole point is that like he gets people who don't believe in Christmas and don't believe in like the Christmas spirit and I believe in the Christmas spirit, so I felt like I was safe. And so I watched it, and I can see why it's a movie that people like, and I can see why it's a good Christmas time movie to watch. Um, and I just was like so worried for the kid, the whole for the baby, the whole time. And the movie kind of made me more sad than scared, which I don't know if that's the thing other people get with horror movies, but I was just like more sad for the family than I was like scared. And so like it was a good movie, but I don't, and I thought like it did have all the makings of what I consider to be a well-rounded Christmas movie with the like horror elements in it too, but I don't know. I just was like kind of like, I was just watching it like, oh my gosh, like what's happening, you know, like what's going to happen, but, but it was pretty good, I would say. Number 10, we have Prancer, which I have on DVD. I've had it on DVD for like one or two years and I just now watched it. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was first supposed to watch this, I was second guessing being like, is this movie gonna end up being so freaking boring <laughs> um, and whatever. And I watched it and I actually enjoyed it a fair amount. Um, and I actually relate, and I also related to the girl, the main girl in it, Jessica is her name. I actually related to her and I really liked her character. I thought she did a great job and was just, she was acting like a regular kid, like, like such good acting that it just seemed like I was watching this little girl live her life, if that makes sense. Um, but I actually really enjoyed it and I feel like it did a great job at putting, like, keeping itself, um, centered in reality while also having the kind of like mythical magical christmas feel to it um so i actually really enjoyed this next we have twas the night which is a like disney decom starring brian cranston and it's like a decom that never gets talked about <laughs> i watched it with a commentary with a pretty much a commentary and i was still bored um that's how like boring this movie was to me i can see why it's a disney channel movie that never gets talked about because it's like 
it's really it was a nothing burger <laughs> like um i can see watching it just for like shits and giggles and stuff um but probably not one that i will revisit because i didn't i usually when i watch stuff with commentary track i can watch stuff that i'm not even interested in and it will make it interesting listening to the commentary track this one i just was completely zoned out because it just was so boring number 12 we have barbie in a christmas carol which i do have this dvd set but of course i got this from the thrift store so i put the movie in which it's this one i put the movie into the dvd player and of course it was skipping and was not working and this is not on any streaming services um so i ended up so it didn't work and i was like note to self if you go to a thrift store and get a movie especially a kids movie make sure the cds aren't scratched um but it's whatever i ended up finding it on youtube in like 30 parts and i was already so uninterested in watching this movie because it's just so bad quality and then it was even worse quality having to watch it on youtube um but i, I feel like this one like i feel like i would have enjoyed it more if i watched it with someone else if that makes sense like there's just some movies that are like this would be fun to watch with like multiple people but i was just watching it by myself and i was kind of zoned out half the time just on my phone um but yeah Barbie right, christmas carol next we have a christmas inheritance which is like a netflix hallmark christmas movie i didn't dislike it as much as i thought i would to me it just felt like the simple life holiday special like a girl a rich girl who doesn't hardly do anything gets sent to a small town whatever um so yeah number 14 is a christmas movie christmas the only reason I, this is a hundred percent like this is a hallmark movie when you think of a hallmark movie horrible acting <laughs> the only reason i watched this was because it was filmed in frankenmuth which is a place that i've been so i thought it was cool seeing a place that i've been um in a movie but it honestly took me so out of the movie because i'm just like watching it it's like it's supposed to be this little christmas town and i'm like a mile that way is like an a and w and a german like sausage place like it just took me out and then like there's two sisters in it and one of the sisters acting was a, a horrible like horrible acting the other one's her she was basic hallmark acting it was fine but the other sister that like didn't like christmas horrible horrible acting oh my god took me out i also had was starting coming on with a migraine when i started watching this like i watched a christmas inheritance with my mom the day before and we had so much fun watching it and this one i was just completely like i can't like it sucked so much i gave it like half a star on letterbox because i was like this is horrible and then last night I watched Xmas with Lee Meester and Robbie Amell. And I only watched this because I love Lee Meester. I, this pet year, I've been watching Gossip Girl for the first time and I love Lee Meester. And that's the only reason why I was like, okay, I'm watching this this year. And if you like her, it's an enjoyable movie. Like, I liked it because I liked her. I feel like if it was a random actress i wouldn't have liked it but because it was her i enjoyed it more so now we're getting on to the movies that i have not watched yet or maybe i've seen past years so i'm not gonna be able to give as much of a review or explanation so i'm just gonna tell you them you can go to my litter box and see the full list what i'm supposed to be watching today is a dennis the menace christmas i'm probably gonna watch it with my niece um I just want to watch this because like whenever there's like a little little boy that's like a little troublemaker little boy it always reminds me of my niece and nephew and I just think that's so cute and so fun I feel like it's probably not going to be that good of a movie but I want to I just need to see it I need to see what happens next I'm watching happiest season which is the movie with 
what's her name from Twilight? Kristen Stork. Kristen Stork. Then we have The Man Who Invented Christmas, which I've been trying to watch for like the past three years, but I never get around to it. And it's about the guy. It's like the story of Charles Dickens and how he like created a fictionalized kind of of how he created a Christmas Carol. Um, I feel like it's gonna be like a pretty cozy movie. I don't know. I love this. I love a Christmas Carol. Like I love the story of it. I it's one of my favorite like Christmas stories. If that makes sense. I just love it. Like the ghost element. It feels so classic Christmas to me. So I'm excited to watch that. Then 19 we have It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas. I associate like the Muppets with Christmas so much. I don't know why. But I just like so I was like I need to watch some Muppet things. So it's a very merry Muppet Christmas where they're like trying to save um a theater or something. Next we have Miss Santa Claus, which is starring um Angela Lansbury. Um, and it is a musical and it's about her being like Mrs. Claus and like going to the real world, like needing a break from being just Santa Claus's wife till she goes to like the real world. Um, and it is a musical, which I am worried about because like for me, it's like I either love a musical or I hate it, I feel like. Um, and it is an older movie. So, but I have it on here. So next we have Eloise at Christmas time. I have on DVD. I was obsessed with Eloise as a kid and I still love her so much and Gavin Creel who was who's in this movie passed away a month ago so I even more was like I have to watch this because I just love this movie as a kid I love it first of all I love Christmas at a hotel like I love a whole concept of Christmas at a hotel probably because of Eloise um, and then also like they go shopping in New York, so it's Christmas in New York. Um, they go to Toys R Us, which doesn't even exist anymore, so it's so cool to see that. And yeah, I just love the Eloise movies, and Eloise at Christmas time is the superior Eloise to me. So I um, can't wait to watch this. Next we have A Christmas Prince, which is a Netflix movie. That I think there's like three of them. But I only put like, I think there's like a Christmas Prince, then a Christmas Royal Wedding, and then a Christmas Baby or something. Like it's like a trilogy. Um, I'm only, I only put the first one because I didn't want to put all three of them. So I'm like, if I watch the first one and I hate it, I don't want to be stuck watching the next two. But maybe those can be for like next year and stuff. Starting the Girl from Ghost, which Ghost is one of my favorite shows. So I am kind of excited to watch it, but again, like, I'm somebody who, like, I'm really, like, not into, like, the Hallmark type of Christmas movies at all. But I felt like, I was like, I, is it really a Christmas list, watch list, if I don't watch some cheesy Hallmark movies? So I had to put some, so I put A Christmas Prince. Number 23, we have The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. Which is is that Disney movie that the Nutcracker has the girl who plays the who the baby in Twilight. I've heard horrible things about this movie. Like I have never heard anyone say they liked this movie, but I the Nutcracker is another one of my favorite Christmas stories. So I was like, I need to watch something in the Nutcracker, and I didn't feel like watching Barbie in the Nutcracker. So I decided to watch this one because this is one that I've been meaning to watch. I think it has like Morgan Freeman in it. And it does seem like a very mystical, magical world, which I love. So I am interested in watching it. I think I'll like it. Even though I see a lot of people seemingly not liking it and talking shit, I feel like I might end up liking it. So um, it is a musical, I'm pretty sure, which again, that can be a hit or miss for me, but I'm excited. On November 24th, we have Good Luck Charlie, It's Christmas. This is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Which is so surprising because I like wrote down like all the things that make a Christmas movie to me. And a lot of those things aren't even in this movie. <laughs> but I don't know. Like I did love the show. Like I really liked the Go Charlie show. But it wasn't my like favorite Disney show by any means. For some reason I love this movie. It's about them like 
because I'm like one of the things I hate is like car trouble movies where it's like oh my god we're trying to do this and we're having car troubles and our car's breaking down but for some reason I love it in that movie I don't know why but I will think it's hilarious and I get try to get everyone to watch it with me and I know I'm gonna try to get everyone to watch it with me this year again because it's just I think it's hilarious like honestly like even if you've never seen the show Girl Child, if you have Disney Plus, just watch this movie because I don't know what it is about it, but for some reason I am just obsessed with this movie. Like I think it's hilarious. I think it's I've made my uh, aunt watch it. I made my mom watch it. I made my cousin watch it. I made my brother watch it. Like. I don't know there's just something about this movie that i'm just obsessed with and i literally w watch it every single year now number 25 hold the odd one okay there's a dog in here now so if you hear anything it's the dog okay next we have the christmas star this is another movie that was on disney plus and i'm not even sure if i want to watch it the clip I watched of it seemed kind of boring, but honestly, I'm just don't really trying to find a different thing to watch. So I know nothing about this movie. It's called The Christmas Star. So we'll see. Number 26 is The Naughty Nine. I'm pretty sure this is a Disney Channel original movie that's more recent. And I think it's about like a group of kids that like who want to, like they're all on the naughty list. So they want to like go to the North Pole and as to stand out what the deal is or something i don't know i'm kind of excited to watch it so it has the boy from eight bit christmas which is one of my other favorite christmas movies so i'm excited to watch it then on the 27th which is the day before thanksgiving i have a charlie brown thanksgiving and one of the Pooh seasons of giving because obviously charlie brown thanksgiving is only like a 25 minute special so i decided to put two and then this is just like, I think they have Thanksgiving in this one of the Pooh movie. Sure you And then, like, um, Winnie the Pooh is another thing that I, for some reason, just associate with, like, holidays and stuff. And I love Winnie the Pooh. Um, so I'm planning on watching those two the night before Thanksgiving. If you hear snoring in the back, it's the dog. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's old. So, she's old. Next on Thanksgiving, the 28th of November, Miracle on 34th Street. I'm not watching this one, but I have Frida. I'm watching the one with the girl from Matilda because that's my favorite, but I have this one on DVD, so. Um, yeah, but I'm watching it because, like, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm not pretty sure, I know, I've seen it. It takes place surrounding like macy's and thanksgiving day parade so i thought watching it on thanksgiving made sense um but i'm excited because i've only seen that one like a handful of times maybe like once or twice in my whole life so i'm excited for a rewatch of that next we have on the 29th a christmas carol the jim carrey one this one i swear i've never seen it like beginning to end because I remember we watched it in school like the day before winter break and never finished it. And I don't feel like I ever sat and watched it again. Like try to watch it. I'm excited to watch this. I feel like it's going to be super cozy. I know people have stuff to say about like the animation, but I don't really care. Next on the 30th. Next we have Diary of Wimpy Kid Cabin Fever. This is like a Dare Would Be Good special movie that they made on Disney Plus and I don't think I've ever read the Cabin Fever Dare Would Be Kid because I did read Dare Would Be Kid in school like growing up um but I don't know if I I feel like I must have I don't know when that one came out but I'm excited I love the Dare, the original Dare Would Be Kid movies and I know this is a cartoon but I'm excited I feel like it's gonna be another like cozy watch and that's the last day of November. Now we get on to December, the 25 days of Christmas. The first movie I have to watch on December 1st is Arthur Christmas. I've seen this once. 
I watched it when I was like 14 or 13 with my friend at her house when I went for, over there for a sleepover around Christmas time and I remember we genuinely loved this movie. I just had to get her out because she was going to keep on moving. Okay, so next, so yeah, Arthur Christmas, did I talk about it? I'm excited to watch that because I remember really liking it as a teenager the one time I saw it. Number two, we have Candy Cane Lane, which is, I think it's an Amazon Prime movie. It's starring, what's his name? Eddie Murphy. It stars Eddie Murphy. And I was kind of like unsure about if I wanted to watch this. I saw that it's supposed to be like a recreation of like the 12 nights of Christmas. Like they are happening like, and things are going wrong and it's like the 12 days of christmas so all the stuff in the 12 days of christmas song is happening each day leading up to something like that it sounded kind of interesting to me so that's on my list next we have um, for no december 3rd a charlie brown christmas slash a christmas story christmas no obviously a charlie brown christmas that's kind of a given i haven't watched that in so long though so i was like i need to watch that it's just 25 minute special though so i put it with a Christmas Story Christmas, which is obviously the like sequel to A Christmas Story, which I, this is unpopular, I don't really love A Christmas Story. It's not in any way my favorite Christmas movie. I don't really enjoy that one that much, but to be fair, I have, so have not watched it in a long, long time. Um, I remember like being a kid and it would like play all day on TV on Christmas Day, but I have not seen it in a long time. But I am interested in watching the new one and I didn't watch it last year, but I watched the trailer for it and I was like, yeah, I kind of want to see what happens with, what's his name? I forgot the main boy's name, but what's his name? I don't know. Um, so I'm interested in seeing it. Number four is Dashing Through the Snow. This is a movie with like Ludacris, it's on Disney Plus. I don't really know the full extent of what it's supposed to be about, but I put it on here. Number five is Claws, which I've seen a handful of times. One of my favorite Christmas movies. I love it, it's a Netflix movie. If you haven't seen this, this is definitely one that I would recommend. Um, it's a great Christmas movie and I'm watching it the night before St. Nicholas Day because I feel like it kind of encompasses the vibe of St. Nicholas of like that day if you know what St. Nick's Day is. Um, we grew up celebrating it because we're German so yeah and I thought the cause kind of fit what St. Nick's Day is. And then number six, December 6th is A Nonsense Christmas with Sabrina Carpenter. She's coming out with like a Christmas special where she's going to perform her, her Christmas album, Fruitcake, which I love that Christmas album. I love it. It came out last year. So I I was originally, because I kind of wanted to watch Claws on St. Nick's Day, but I don't want spoilers for the Sabrina Carpenter thing. So I was like, I need to watch that when it comes out. And it comes out December 6th. So I'm going to be watching the Sabrina Carpenter Christmas special on December 6th. Then on December 7th, Strawberry Shortcake, A Very Merry, A Very Merry Christmas. One of my favorite Christmas specials, I love Strawberry Shortcake. It was one of my favorite shows as a kid, and this was my favorite episode, whatever. It's like 47 minutes, so I'm counting that as kind of like a special. If it was longer than 30 minutes, I count it as its own thing, and I don't have to do a double watch. Um, I might end up doing it anyway because I might find other Christmas movies I want to watch. I love this Christmas special so much. So I'm excited to rewatch it. I've like been holding off. Like it keeps popping up on my YouTube and I keep wanting to just watch it. But I have to wait till December 7th. But yeah, it's my favorite strawberry shortcake episode, whatever. Number eight is I Believe in Santa. It's another one of those like Netflix Hallmark movies it seemed like it seemed from the trailer it seems like it's gonna be utterly ridiculous and i need to see what the heck like it's about this girl who hates christmas and then she starts dating this guy who still believes in santa and stuff and i just need i feel like it's gonna be ridiculous i need to watch it with someone i also feel like that's one that i'm gonna need to watch with someone else i don't want to watch it by myself it would be funner watching it with someone else 
number nine we have mixed nuts which is the movie with steve martin and rita wilson i've never seen this and i've been wanting to watch it for so long i don't even know i think i might know where i can watch it but i've been wanting to watch it's like a crisis hotline on christmas and all these people get stuck together i've been wanting to watch it for so long and like watch me watch it and then not like it but i've just been like wanting to watch this for years so i'm excited for that number 10 is one magic christmas this is another um disney channel i think disney channel it might just be disney um christmas movie that i don't really know a lot about but it's on here so number um well december 11th i have christmas again the disney channel original movie one and it's pretty much like groundhog day but christmas with this like little girl and another one i'm kind of excited to watch and to see what happens i'm not always the biggest fan of like groundhog day things because obviously they can get a little repetitive um which is the whole point i guess but i am excited to see that especially because like i feel like disney channel decoms were so sparse with the christmas movies like i feel like it was all about like the halloween towns and don't look under the beds like they were very much like disney channel was like halloween decoms and i feel like we didn't have as many christmas decoms when i was younger like we had like go charlie's christmas and that's like all i can remember but now there's been more since i've stopped watching it and so now i want to see what they do with christmas movies now for december 12th i have merry christmas mr bean slash home alone um merry christmas mr bean i watch it every single year it's to me i find it hilarious it's like a little 30 minute special with mr bean celebrating christmas and it's hilarious i literally watch it every single year um just like as a quick watch um I just love it so much and it's hilarious and if you haven't watched it it's on youtube just watch it it's so funny and then slash home alone because obviously the mr bean thing is only like 30 minutes so i have home alone with it i was originally not gonna watch home alone this year but i just re decided like i love that movie and i need to watch it I only have Home Alone though, I don't have Home Alone 2, which I kind of wish I would have put Home Alone 2, but maybe I'll watch that on like the 12 days of Christmas, like after Christmas. Um, but yeah, I was like, I need to watch Home Alone and I think there's um, some commentary tracks for it. So I'll probably watch the it with the commentary track, Home Alone. Yeah. Number 13 is All I Want for Christmas. This is a movie starring Thora Birch. I've never seen it, but I love Hocus Pocus and I love Thora Birch and Hocus Pocus and this was around the same time. So I feel like I'm going to really like this movie um, because I really like young Thora Birch's movies. So I'm excited. It's like her wanting to like get her parents back together for Christmas, I think. December 14th, I have How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I'll probably also watch this with a commentary track with like Djibouti dubs or pretty much it or something. Um, I haven't seen this in a while. I watched the like cartoon Grinch, the like the Grinch, the newest one last year. Um, so I didn't want to do a rewatch of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Number 15 is A Mom for Christmas. This is a movie starring Olivia Newton John. And I'm excited to watch this. I'm definitely going to watch it with my mom because me and her both love like Grace and stuff. Um, this was like a TV movie. Um, so I'm excited to see this. It's about like a little girl who like wishes for a mom for Christmas and then like a mannequin comes to life and stuff. So I'm excited to watch that with my mom. It's going to be on the 15th. I think it's going to be a fun movie. Number 16th, we have No Al. This is the Disney Plus movie with ben Bill Hader and um, Anna Kendrick. I've only seen this once the year it came out and I really, really liked it and I have not watched it since and I've been meaning to. So I'm excited to rewatch Noelle. She's like the daughter of Santa and all that. And then she like has to go find her brother who's supposed to be the next Santa. I really liked it when I watched it the first time so I'm excited to watch it again and see if I feel the same way. I remember like 
they had like a little reindeer like cgi reindeer thing i remember thinking it was the cutest thing ever so i'm excited for a rewatch of that then on december 17th i have a muppet family christmas this i've seen i've watched this last year just like kind of in passing i just put it on in the background but i'm gonna sit and i'm gonna watch it this year i this is um where they put the Muppets, like Kermit and all of them, with the Sesame Street characters like Elmo and Big Bird. And that is like the crossover of my childhood dreams. I didn't know this existed until a couple years ago. And when I tell you, my mind was like, oh my god, like my two faves. I'm like, oh my god, crossover, like the Avengers wish. Like, the Avengers just wish. Like, the Muppets and Sesame Street, yes. And they all go celebrate christmas at like foggy bears like mom's house but she's like going on a like vacation or she was trying to and they also put like fraggle rock in it and stuff like it's all the muppets together and stuff and i think it's the cutest thing and i love it i think it's so funny i'm excited to watch that again number 18th is a snow globe christmas um this is a hallmark movie hallmark lifetime oh no wait no i think this might be abc family when abc family used to make christmas movies and there, cause there's just snow globe there's snow globe with christina million and then this one is a snow globe christmas that also has christina million in it but she's not the main character in this one this one has like donald faze on also in it and it's about a girl who like gets sucked into a snow globe and has a family or something i don't know but I'm excited to watch it even though I'm sure it's going to be cheesy because it's a pretty much like a Hallmark Christmas movie. Number 19, we have The Santa Clauses, the TV show. I've never watched the TV show and I don't, it has two seasons so I don't really know how I'm going to do this. Like watching it all in one day unless I have a migraine or something and I'm stuck in bed all day. But I'm going to figure it out. I'm at least going to watch like the first couple of episodes because I am interested in I love Tim Allen as Santa Claus, so I want to see what the TV show has to offer. Number 20 is Winnie the Pooh, a Barry Mary Pooh year. Again, as I said, I associate with Winnie the Pooh with the holidays so much. Um, I don't know if I ever watched Winnie the Pooh, a Barry Mary, a Mary Pooh year or whatever. I probably have when I was little, but I am going to rewatch it. It's probably going to be super cozy. It's the 20th of December, so it's like... you know what am I trying to say it's like the first day of I think 21st is actually the first day of winter but whatever now for December 21st I have Santa Claus the movie I've never seen this this is not Santa Claus this is Santa Claus the movie I don't really know anything about this movie but it's Santa Claus the movie number 22 December 22nd is unaccompanied minors I watched this for the first time last year or the year before last and I really liked it. It's about a bunch of kids who like get stuck at the airport for Christmas and it kind of reminded me a little bit of Good Luck Charlie It's Christmas so I think that's why I liked it but I, uh, I can't wait to rewatch this because I really enjoyed it the first time I watched it. Now for December 23rd I have 8-Bit Christmas. This is one of my favorite recent Christmas movies. One of my favorite Christmas movies of all times. It takes place in the 80s. Yeah, and it's about like a kid who wants um, a game system for Christmas. And I love the all the characters in this. Steve Zahn is in it as the dad. I love this movie so much and I highly recommend it. It's on, I think it's on HBO, but my grandma got me the <laughs> DVD for it um last year or the year before yeah it's one of my favorite christmas movies so i'm watching it on the 23rd i almost didn't put this on my list this year just because i was like my whole goal is to see watch christmas movies that i haven't seen before but i was just like i need to watch this like i need to um it's one of my favorites so then for december 24th christmas eve i have the polar express me and my brother watch this have watched this every christmas eve probably I would say since at least 2016 at least 2016 we've watched this every single year on Christmas Eve 
like clockwork it's the perfect christmas eve movie because the whole movie takes place on christmas eve obviously i also we i've always lived the two houses i've lived in my entire life each have been right next to train tracks so i can always hear the train i've always been able to hear like trains so like it's very like it takes place where i'm from like the boys from where i'm from so like i know a lot this movie gets a lot of shit and stuff and people make fun of it but i love this movie so much one of the be best greatest of all time christmas movies and lastly for christmas day i have the santa claus again like just one of the best i feel like classic christmas movies classic 90s christmas movies um when i look at these lists like when people do like the 25 days of christmas or like whatever they never have a movie for christmas day and i'm like are we not why do we stop on christmas eve why aren't we watching christmas movie on Chris christmas movies on christmas day didn't make sense to me so i put the santa claus i feel like it's a pretty good christmas day movie um so i love this one i love the first one so i only have the first one um maybe i'll watch the other ones next year but yeah this is the last movie so that is it that is my 55 days of christmas watch list if i don't really know if anyone will want this but if anyone does i could make a movie the week after christmas or after this reviewing all these like I did with the first couple of them um but I also again like I have letterbox I am reviewing a majority of these movies like leaving a review for most of these movies so if you are interested in following along you can go follow me on letterbox and look at all the lists I have for 55 days of Christmas and me rating them um but yeah I hope to have more Christmas content out but with my with everything that goes on with me and my my chronic illness um i just never know when i will get a chance to film but thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and ah merry christmas christmas is coming y'all so and if you guys have any christmas movies that you think i might want to watch next year or maybe if I, maybe this year if i just decide to add some you can leave them if you want. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.